so let us uh, start a new discussion today uh, we will continue because it will take some time uh, we have just finished mrp uh, which is materials requirement planning and when we were doing mrp i told you that it is an inventory management technique so meaning thereby it helps us in managing inventory and when we were doing mrp i was telling you that mrp is a dependent demand based inventory management technique so which means mrp can only be implemented for those products or for those parts whose demand can be understood with the theory of dependent demands so dependent demand is what whose demand you can actually calculate that for one unit there will be four units of it which will be required so it is not going to be five it is not going to be three so that is dependent demand system there only we were discussing that whenever it is possible we should be managing inventory using the dependent demand inventory management system which is mrp but not every time it is possible to have a uh, dependent management inventory modules to be applied and the reason is simple because uh, there are some things whose demand is straight away independent uh, for example you know if you have to produce two cars you would need say 10 tires but uh, for a uh, cars itself how much will be the demand actually that is something which is not very much clear so there is no static number to it and hence it is forecasting which will come into play so for this type of demand wherein we do not know the exact numbers we will talk of independent demand inventory management systems and in that we talk of some models also so in this discussion we will talk of all those things which or whose inventory should be managed by independent inventory management systems but not dependent inventory management systems so just to start the discussion i hope we know this but just to uh, get ourselves at the line of the discussion uh, let us reiterate it once again that inventory can cost you as much as 50% of your total operations cost i mean the number might be looking just like a 50 but it is actually huge and 50% is too much a thing right now wherein we are talking of uh, inventory we are talking of inventory of raw materials also we are talking inventory of work in progress we are talking of inventory of finished goods also so combining all the those can actually escalate uh, the proportion of your operations cost to 50 percent and hence inventory management is a very very important techniques to go with we know that if it is that important if the 50 percent cost of it can be uh, uh, saved then i think we should save it and it is hence very simply written that cost can be saved by reducing inventory and this can actually be done by following some set techniques which we can discuss now we have discussed one technique which is mrp in the uh, last discussion today we will do a uh, independent demand inventory systems what is it that we are trying to achieve when we are talking of these models we are just trying to achieve this objective we are just trying to strike a balance between inventory management or inventory investment and the customer service. Uh, we have to appreciate the fact that customer service also comes at a cost, right? If you are uh, not able to manage inventory well, then you might end up with the problem of getting the products out of stock and hence the customer service is getting hampered. You might also end up in increasing uh, your inventory cost because of the fear that you should not go out of the stock. So you giving a better customer service you are actually increasing your cost so now the point is that how do you balance these two things in such a way that the inventory investment should be as minimum as possible so that it does not actually influence or impact your customer service which you should be giving to the consumers and which they deserve also right so this is something wherein the models comes into picture this is where the maths comes into picture and this is where the formulas and equations comes into the picture so it is not that we do it hypothetically, we do it intuitively, but it is using statistics and maths that we do it. And we will talk of some models in this thing also. Before that, I have already talked about this, but just a very quick recap of when we are talking of inventory, that can be of many types. So starting with, we can talk of raw material inventory. These are the materials which has been purchased, but not processed. And they are going to be part of your finished good at some point of time in your manufacturing process. You can also talk of work in process inventory. So work in process inventory is going to be those components which actually uh, have undergone some change but are not complete 
so the work is still being done on that so that is your work in process inventory now work in process inventory you would do it in finance if i am not wrong and in finance work in process inventory uh, actually is uh, highlighted as a huge cost to the company and when you are talking about this as a huge cost uh, one of the ways to understand that why it actually is considered as a huge cost is because it is uh, something which plays a larger than life role in deciding the cycle time of your product so what is the cycle time of your product if you would try to understand the cycle time it can be explained by looking at this picture <coughs> you see and we have discussed it of all the activities that could be done uh, to a raw material so that it can be converted into a finished goods there is one activity which is actually not adding any cost or not adding any value and that thing is inventory everything else perhaps is adding some value except inventory and what to talk of adding value to it but it is actually impacting it negatively to some extent so if you can actually curtail this inventory time the time that the whether it is in work in progress or for that matter any type of uh, finished goods or unfinished goods if you can reduce that time you end up in decreasing the cycle time also so work in progress inventory actually deals with this thing and taking care of it can decrease your cycle time and hence it is important to understand we can also talk of maintenance repair and operating supply inventory which is uh, essential for you to keep the machinery and processes uh, active without that you will not be able to run your production house and you can also talk of finished goods inventory which actually are waiting for the shipment because they have been finalized as part of your production exercise so this is something that we talk of the types of inventory now uh, let us talk of some very basic things about inventory before getting into the models <coughs> let us talk of the erstwhile methods which has been used uh, since long to manage the inventory and uh, management of inventory has actually started with very basic principles of classification in the earlier times you would see that people would classify the things because not every material would perhaps worth the time of yours in the same way as you would be spending on to maybe some other product so first step of inventory is to classify the products and hence it is important to understand that how products can be classified is every product that you are producing worth the same type of inventory treatment that you are going to give to all the products or the different type of products would require or would deserve a separate type of inventory treatments and the moment we know that there is something which is called as pareto principle exists which is also called as abc analysis if you have heard about it we know that the inventory treatment that we end up in giving to the products is not essentially the same for every type of products because we know and it exists and it has been proved in 19th century by someone called as wilfred of parrot and the principle is also after his name parrot of principle he said that we in any business house would come across two type of products and one products could be those products which are very much essential for you because they contribute to the larger volume and the larger profit share of your company there are some products which actually contributes less to the profit volume and there are some products which actually can contribute the least and hence the products which are contributing in least amount to your uh, profits then i do not think that you should be giving equal treatment to these products as you are giving to the other products which are giving you better profit margin and this graph can actually make you understand this thing in more better and a representative way you can see here perhaps the product a is the most important product and it is only 15% of the items which is responsible for 80% of your sales volume and your dollar sales also and hence it makes sense for you to invest heavily as far as in inventory management techniques are concerned for the product type a rather than talking about product c because it is actually you know responsible for 5% of your annual dollar volume so this is basic level of you know analysis that you do and before getting into inventory models you first classify the products and then suppose it is a type of products which would then require the application of those models that we are going to talk right and hence uh, it is not only in production but it is the basic principles of management also that you do not give equal treatment to anything in marketing also we know it with the name of customer relationship management and when we are talking of crm which is customer relationship management we know we should understand and appreciate this 
that not every customer deserves the same treatment uh, from marketer's perspective uh, and the treatment has to be individualistically framed depending upon the kind of contribution that you as a consumer is making to this form. Right? So this is how we actually look at it. Now the second thing that we do before talking about these models is uh, how uh, accurately you are able to maintain the inventory reports. And this is also essential. Uh, otherwise, all the techniques that you might talk of, uh, or all the models that you might talk of, they will be in vain. And hence, uh, you should actually be very good at keeping the records of your existing inventory, whatever you have in hand. We have also talked about it in MRP. In MRP, it becomes essentially more important because therein you are talking about dependent demand system. Here also, this record keeping is very important. How is it done is by doing two things which generally people would do if you talk of inventory management. Now first thing is to have the important information of what is available to you. And what is available to you would be segregated into three parts. You can see ordering, scheduling and shipping. So what has already been ordered, what is scheduled to be ordered and what is in shipment. So these three things should be available with you before you are subjecting any amount of data to the inventory models. Right? Second thing is uh, that you have to take care of is cycle counting. Cycle counting is basically an auditing technique for inventory. And you all understand what is auditing. Auditing is about re-verifying uh, the records of yours to identify if there are any loopholes or if there are any failure points and if there is any misfed data available into your system. Similarly, uh, when you do it for inventory, the existing inventory that is called as cycle counting. And cycle counting basically is about reassuring the data that you are having as your in inventory management is actually standing still and is actually speaking sense and there is no spurious data into it so that you can take into account when you are talking of your inventory management models. Right? And cycle counting is basically a periodic exercise. It is not an event, it is a process. And what is meaning of event and a process? Event is a one-time activity and process is a continuous exercise. So you do not take it as an event, that is what you have done it once and then you don't talk of it, but you consider it as a continuous exercise. And hence it is called a cycle counting. You do not stop, you just keep on doing it. You decide your interval and you should be doing it regularly. Right? So this is your cycle counting. Now with these things in place, now you talk of inventory management models. If you would recall, in MRP also, we first have talked of something which actually are required essentially before you can talk of MRP techniques. And if you could recall, we have talked about bills of materials, we have talked about lead time, we have talked about product structure, we have talked about what is in hand, we have talked about the existing stock. All those things when they were given into the MRP system, then they were able to generate the reports. Similarly, when these information, the classification information, the record information, when you are having these things available to you, then you use these phenomena to actually implement the inventory management models into uh, understanding and better managing your inventory system. With this information in background, we will start off with uh, inventory models. Uh, how many of you have done economic order quantity model in the past? One. Neeraj, you have also done it. Two. Ankur has also done it. What can you recall from this model? What is the optimum quantity hmm. that needs to be ordered hmm. uh, in an individual order? In an individual order, can you recall something out of it? How you, we used to do it? Huh? Yes, Ankur is saying something. Huh. Hmm. So you are talking about formula and you are not wrong also. How uh, do we understand that? How do we arrive at that formula? Have you done that? Hmm? How uh, maths mein kehte the na? What do you call it as? Ki is equation ko kya karna hai? Banana hai. How do we make that information? See, what I am trying to do, I am trying to understand uh, in what perspective have you done EOQ so that I will talk accordingly. Right? So I am trying to understand from you, have you done EOQ in terms of deriving that information that you were talking about that this is under root or square root of 2 ds divided by h. So have you derived that equation or it is just that you now know that this is the formula and we need to just put the things into it and we would know what is EOQ. Huh? 
you just know the formula right total quantity if you order can be defined टमोरो a holding post is the post which is associated with holding of inventory uh, when you are holding a inventory you are actually incurring cost all that cost is actually uh, something which is put under the head of holding post there are some assumptions of these models and these assumptions are important to understand and now there should be genuine question which should come in your mind that why on earth are we only talking about two types of cost why are we only talking about holding cost and ordering cost why are we not talking about the other cost which could potentially be involved while managing inventory we talk of these two cost only because all other cost which are associated with inventory are actually assumed to be either constant or not changing in independent models of inventory management so these are their assumptions so if there is anything which is varying varying means changing then it is going to be these two cost only so either it is holding cost which is changing or it is ordering cost which is changing all other cost are kept constant right so they are not changing and that is why we are not actually talking of the other cost so just to put the things in perspective holding cost is uh, all that cost which actually you incur in managing your inventory in holding your inventory and ordering cost is that cost which is associated with receiving and managing and putting the orders across we also talk of something which is called as setup cost a uh, setup cost is used parallelly with ordering cost but uh, if you would go etymologically to it and legitimately to it you would realize that setup cost is a broader term and ordering cost is part of setup cost but and setup cost is what setup cost is that cost which you incur in order to make the machinery is ready for that for the production to take place and for that you also talk of ordering cost ordering cost is part of your setup cost and bulk of the setup cost is basically uh, into the orders only and that is why the order cost are put parallel to your setup cost so do not be confused whether we are talking of setup cost or we are talking of ordering cost we are going to treat both of them as same or both of them equally so there is no change in it so these two cost we have to take care of combining these two cost makes the total cost of your inventory management system miraj this is cost of manpower if you have a system in place now for example mrp system you have a system in place which is doing the orders for you so that system is not free it is actually coming at a cost so all that cost is actually managing the data scheduling data if it has come if it has not come all that actually would come under the ordering cost supply chain management cost that would come under the ordering cost right receiving goods whether the goods has been received whether the orders has been executed or not all that i mean not everyone would have those computers to be working for them man powers and uh, even you know the small small things this room is also having a cost the renting cost which is uh, being incurred by you in order to process the orders in order to receive the orders so that all come would come under the ordering cost total cost would then be some of these two right because everything else is kept constant now we are talking of the total cost you now go back to the objective of the inventory uh, management models and if you would recall we were talking of the objectives of all inventory management was to strike a balance between inventory investment and customer service and when we are talking of striking a balance between these two we were invariably talking about keeping the inventory investment minimum possible and not compromising on to service quality or the service customer service whatever you may call it now when we are talking of keeping this cost minimum the inventory cost minimum we are in other words talking of keeping these two cost minimum because these two cost when are combined are actually giving you the figure of total cost so what we now have to do whatever models that we do we have to keep the total cost which is addition of these two as minimum and when we will achieve it if we can solve an equation in terms of how much we should order we would end up in getting a number for which we will be having the minimum possible cost 
for managing our inventory and without compromising the customer service right so this is an introductory talk uh, introductory discussion on to what is inventory in basic sense and then we will talk of uh, the models which are here we will basically talk of two models first is going to be your economic order quantity so some of you have done it we will take their help and we will also talk of production oriented uh, inventory models wherein we will talk of if the production is actually uh, going on side by side then how to handle the inventory right these two models we will try to touch upon and we will do them tomorrow so thank you very much